uh, we will be talking about uh, domain-specific languages uh, and uh, <coughs> embedding them in Haskell. And uh, we will be looking at uh, languages uh, that are query languages for databases, like SQL. You all know SQL. Uh, here's a simple query. Uh, it gets some data from the database, and also it uh, includes some parameter that must be filled, indicated by this question mark. Uh, so what uh, has to be done to run this query from your program? Uh, so here's your program in Haskell. Here's your database. Uh, first of all, you must uh, send the query to the database uh, along with uh, the parameters uh, to put in, uh, instead of the question mark. Uh, then you must uh, receive the response from the database, and the response will contain uh, some uh, data. So uh, you must think about the protocol, how to uh, send and read bytes. Uh, you must think about writing the queries. Also, uh, you must know how to serialize uh, your, ha uh, your Haskell data and uh, how to deserialize uh, the response. So how to map database types to types in your Haskell program. And in this talk, we will be focusing only on uh, the query part. So we will be, we'll be talking about how to build queries. And uh, we will <coughs> not use SQL, but we will look at another database. Uh, it's called Neo4j. It's a graph database. Uh, is anyone familiar with Neo4j? Oh, uh, <coughs> more than I expected. So uh, here's a quick background. Neo4j is a graph database. It stores uh, nodes. Uh, these nodes can have labels and some properties. And you may think of properties uh, just like a JSON object, so uh, like string keys and some values. Uh, and nodes are connected with relations. Uh, and these relations also have labels and properties. But uh, nodes may have multiple properties, but relations uh, may have at most one. Uh, multiple labels, but relations may have at most one label. And uh, to interact with uh, this database, uh, you use uh, the special language called Cypher. Uh, here is an example of Cypher query. Uh, let's look uh, what it contains. It has operators, like this match here. It uh, roughly corresponds to select in SQL. Uh, you have patterns for nodes uh, with labels. Uh, also, you may accept some named parameters just like SQL. Uh, you have patterns for relations, and you can combine nodes and relations to form paths. And also, you specify what your query returns. So uh, you may think about this query as a function of this type. It takes uh, some user ID and returns a list of uh, tuples. You get some user timestamp and some file object. Uh, also, you may think of this query as uh, this uh, roughly corresponding SQL statement, but uh, it's uh, obvious that this statement is far more complicated, and sometimes it's easier to model your data with Neo4j. OK, enough, of, uh, enough with uh, background. Let's get to the code. How do we run this query in uh, actual Haskell? So here's the code. For example, you write your query in uh, your uh, code as a string. Uh, by the way, what does this query do? Uh, it looks for a user uh, with uh, ID. Uh, that is set by parameter, and it gets all files that this user has uploaded, indicated by the relation called uploaded. OK, um, then you just connect to the database, run the query, um, specifying the parameters, and get the result and parse it. And the result uh, is in the form of a simple map uh, from uh, text keys to some values, again, like j uh, just like JSON. And all of this is implemented in um, package called Hellsbolt, maintained by us, by uh, Biocat. And uh, it's uh, uh, on package, and you may use it. But uh, of course, uh, there are strings. And uh, no one likes to write strings in their code. So uh, actually, we would like to have uh, some sort of DSL. For example, we would like to have something like this. Um, so uh, we will map Cypher uh, operators to some functions in Haskell. And uh, actually, in our library, this is a free monadic DSL. Um, so uh, this, for example, combinator called match f uh, creates a match op <coughs> operation in Cypher, and then this operator return creates a return r statement in Cypher, and so on. But um, uh, there are still strings, 
and uh, let's think uh, what we will what we want GHC to check for us in these strings. Uh, first of all, now for J is a schemaless database, so uh, uh, we say that our domain is completely modeled by types in our Haskell application. So. For example, like this, I introduce uh, some record called user that has ID and name. I introduce a file and, and so on. So uh, I uh, must ensure that the data in my database is uh, in the same uh, schema as uh, my types in Haskell. So let's look at, at our query again. And we would like GHC to check uh, the types uh, we are using. And not only the names of the types, uh, but uh, the names of the fields as well. So if we are uh, getting a node <coughs> with label user and uh, we are accessing its property called ID, we must be able to check that this type in our Haskell code has this property. Also, uh, we would like to annotate uh, which parameters our query accepts. And also, uh, probably we would want to uh, annotate what it returns. OK? and. Uh, uh, there is a fourth part to it, and uh, namely, uh, this is a language. And as a language, it has some syntax and semantics. And uh, in an ideal situation, we would like uh, GHC to be able to uh, reason about uh, the semantics of our language uh, so we do not get a runtime error from our database. OK, and uh, let's focus on the first part. Uh, I will call this thing a selector. Uh, in simple words, it is a, it's just a pattern for a node. It has a variable name, some labels it may have, and uh, some parameters that must be matched. So how can we model these selectors in Haskell? Well, pretty simple, right? Uh, selector for nodes, selector for relations, they uh, are simple records they, that have variable names, some labels, properties, and node selector has uh, multiple labels, and relation selector has at most one, which we model as a maybe. OK, but uh, we would like GHC to reason about types. And here, the types are in form of strings. So not good. Uh, therefore, we introduce a type level parameters to our selectors, like this. Uh, node selector will uh, track a type level list of types. And relation selector will track a type level maybe of type. And this is possible in GHC with two extensions called kind signatures and data kinds. Uh, who has heard about data kinds? Oh, OK, so uh, I <coughs> don't have to go into much detail. So uh, type kind signatures allow me to write this thing. Uh, so I specify the parameter and its kind. And data kinds allow me to use uh, lists and maybes on type level. So. Uh, Probably uh, it makes sense to look at kinds of these types. They are like this. So they both produce a type, but the arguments are of different types. And for comparison, here's the kind of maybe. It's just a simple function, uh, type level function, sort of, that takes type and produces another type. OK, uh, but uh, our selectors are actually pretty similar in Cypher. And uh, how do we want to use them? How do we want to construct these selectors? For example, something like this. We would like to start with an empty selector, add some data to it, uh, like, like some variable name, some uh, <coughs> label type name. And here we are using type applications to uh, refer to actual type in Haskell. And add some parameters. OK. Uh, and we would like to work with relation selectors in the same way. So we must introduce a type class and we want to make instances of this type class b for both kinds of selectors. And therefore, uh, my type class should refer to a <coughs> something uh, with unknown kind. And so I must make it polymorphic in kind. And this is possible in GHC by extension called polykinds. OK, so it allows me uh, to write this kind variable here. And uh, later, I will specify what K stands for. Now, uh, this identifier method is pretty simple. It takes a text, and uh, it does not care about the types. But for example, this label, it takes a selector with some types already, and it must add a new one. So what do we put here? The question mark represents some, uh, something of kind k. 
And uh, this prop is even harder, uh, this property, because it must check that the property with this name, represented as text here, is actually present in uh, the labels we have defined for our selector. The same goes for this param. So <coughs> uh, here's the second take on our type class. And now we must add not only methods, but uh, type families, and uh, if you heard about data kinds, probably you all know what type families are, so I will just proceed. Uh, so we add this type family called can add type. It takes something of type uh, of kind k and generates a constraint, and this constraint will assert if a selector may take one more type. Okay, uh, so um, moving on. Uh, yeah, uh, this is enabled with GHC extension called type families. Nothing new. OK, um, later, uh, a new type family called add type that will actually add a new type to our, uh, to our list of types of kind k. So, uh, but this is a trick. It needs a so-called inactivity annotation enabled with type family dependencies. And this little trick will enable uh, type inference. So uh, we will not have to add any annotations, and GHC will understand anything, everything. And uh, the last bit is um, uh, the has field constraint that will uh, check that we can uh, access a property in our types. OK, using these families, we can rewrite our um, uh, signatures like this. So this label, for example, gets a new constraint and uses a family add type in its result. The same goes for this prop, but there is still a problem here because um, we have text and we have type level name of the field, and they must somehow uh, know about each other. So what do we do? I propose a simple solution. We introduce a new type, <coughs> a new type over string, and this new type will be tagged by type level string, uh, which is called symbol in Haskell. So uh, S symbol S stands for singleton, and I demand that uh, the runtime value of this string is equal to, the, to its type level tag. And when I uh, have this uh, new type, I can uh, use it in my <coughs> signature. So, uh, so um, <coughs> GHC will correctly infer what type to use, uh, what type level string to use in the constraint. Okay. Uh, but how to actually produce values of this symbol S? We need some nice syntax to use our library. And uh, to that, uh, there is a wonderful extension called overloaded labels, which allows me to write something like this. So uh, this syntax here, a hash and some string, is enabled with extension called overloaded labels. Have you heard about it? Oh, uh, yeah, great. So uh, something new for you. Uh, <coughs> what it does, it looks at the string, here it is user ID, and it looks at the type which is expected at this position. So um, earlier I said that this prop is uh, expecting a symbol S. So it will look for an instance of class is label, which uh, binds together uh, symbol uh, and its uh, name. So in, in this instance, we can use a function symbol val from uh, GHC type leads, uh, which uh, just gets uh, our type level string to runtime string. So uh, by this nice syntax with uh, hash signs, we are able to uh, actually get named arguments for our functions. You, you may think about it like this. Uh, so um, even uh, if not for DSLs, you may use this technique to add named arguments to your functions every day. And if we define another instance of this type class, now for node selectors, uh, you may even write it like this. So the first one, uh, hash user, uh, is, a type of, uh, is of type node selector. GHC will know it. It will infer. And uh, the second one is of type symbol S. Uh, and uh, they are both in one expression, and GHC is not confused. Um, I think it's pretty nice. And OK, uh, of course, uh, the whole <coughs> uh, expression is of type node selector, and it has uh, just one type level tag. It refers to the type called user in my program. OK, 
Uh, now uh, we have learned to um, define uh, <coughs> selectors with variable names and uh, to uh, add properties to them. But there is uh, still one more problem, namely uh, I have a with label function which adds a new uh, type level tag to my uh, to my selector. But uh, to generate the actual query, I need to know the name of this type as a string. OK, uh, is it possible to do in Haskell? Of course it is. How to get a name of a, <coughs> a type? We will use genetics. You probably know that uh, you need to derive genetics uh, using, oh, uh, using derived generic mechanism uh, to work, for example, with ASON, and it does some magic on the internal. But uh, actually using genetics, genetics yourself is not hard. Uh, what it does, it defines an instance of type class called generic. And uh, in it, it has some um, associated type family. But uh, all we need to know is to see that uh, here it has uh, a name of our type. So we can pattern match with the type family on this stuff, not knowing anything about it. We just extract this type level symbol, and we have a function that uh, for any type that has genetic instance will get us its name. So we extend uh, the type of our this label with this symbol constraint, so uh, known symbol to be able to get the value of this name in runtime. OK, we've talked about the signatures and the usage, and now let's talk about implementation, how to write instances for these type classes. And the interesting part is how to write definitions for our type families. OK, uh, how, to, uh, how do we do this? F OK, for example, we need to write <coughs> a definition for this family, can add type. It accepts something of kind k and generates a constraint. For uh, nodes, it's simple. Uh, we know that k is a type level list. Uh, and we know that nodes always may have a one more label. So we generate a trivial constraint. In Haskell, trivial constraint, one that is always satisfied, is denoted by empty brackets. But what do we do for relations? For nothing case, it's exactly the same. We can add a label if it does not have one already. But what to put uh, in a just case? So we need to somehow fail the compilation at this moment. And I can put some uh, weird stuff like false equals true in place of the question mark. And when uh, the user gets there, JHC will complain, false does not equal to true, cannot unify types. OK, we achieved our goal. But is it nice? No, because user will see a scary type error from inside of our library, and he will not understand what is going on. So uh, if you are doing <coughs> nice, um, type level magic, you always must uh, think about what the user will see in the error messages. So uh, DHC provides a nice mechanism for that, and it's called custom type errors. Uh, you uh, can use this constructor type error uh, in a definition of any type family. It will unify with any kind. And uh, when the user calls, uh, tries to compile this code, he will receive a nice message that you wrote for him, uh, seeing uh, what exactly is going wrong. So uh, in fact, all uh, families in our implementation uh, use these type errors. And uh, when you try to use the library and you mess up, you will get a nice looking message, for example, if you are referring to a field that is not, uh, that is not present. Uh, sorry. Um, OK. Um, now. Uh, what are we going to do next? Uh, as I said, we must uh, annotate parameters that the query accepts. OK. Uh, this is actually simple. Uh, we make a wrapper <coughs> on our DSL type, uh, adding one more type level tag. Here I call it params. And uh, its kind is just, <laughs> uh, its kind is just, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, associative list of field uh, f parameter names and their types. OK? Um, and now I can annotate my queries like this. So it's a query that accepts one parameter. It's called user ID, and its type should be text. Great. Now, to run this query, to actually run it, 
uh, we must supply all <coughs> parameters. But uh, we don't know uh, how many there are. And it seems that we need a function that accepts an unknown number of arguments, a variadic function. Is it possible to make a function of unknown number of arguments in Haskell? Yes, with a trick. Um, I will try to fix this stuff. Uh, no? OK. Um, so uh, you make a type class, another type class. And it's a strange looking type class. It has two parameters. Uh, one is your uh, list of uh, list of parameters, and the other one called fun here is uh, an output type. So it will generate a type of a function that will accept all the arguments you need. And here uh, I <coughs> again use a dependency notation, a functional dependency, to make inference possible. So GHC will know that. Uh, exactly uh, each type level list of parameters corresponds to exactly one type of a function. And implementation is not hard. Here we have an accumulator function, uh, accumulator value, uh, that will collect uh, parameters in runtime. And uh, <coughs> output type is uh, unknown. So it may also have more errors in it, more arguments. For example, I will show you the recursive case. And here, it's a simple recursion, but on type level. You see, I pattern match on my params. I pattern match its head here. And uh, while doing this, I also uh, prepend an argument to my output function. OK, uh, and also it binds the name. So I generate a function of multiple arguments, and also these arguments are named. OK, and uh, if I <coughs> define a simple uh, runner for this function, which supplies an empty accumulator, like okay, like uh, a function to reverse the list, something like this, almost the same. And now I can run my queries like this, and GHC will check uh, that I filled all parameters with correct names and with values of expected types as I want. Okay, now um, we've done two things. We uh, typed uh, our selectors, and uh, we've typed um, our parameters. What's next is um, typing return record. Okay, let's see what we have now. Uh, we can uh, run this typed query, supplying typed parameters, but we still use strings to decode the result. Okay, uh, no one likes to write strings, because, for example, uh, in my project, we separate the queries and the code that runs these queries in two separate modules. So when you actually call it, you must go in another file and look through the code which uh, fields it will return. And you always make mistakes with it. OK, and also you notice that I use this unsafe operator from Lens that will throw me a runtime error. <coughs> if I try to access a parameter that is not present, a field. N okay, and of course, no one wants runtime error errors if they are preventable. I want a compile time error. And uh, this is not yet implemented in our library, but uh, the way is the same as parameters. We just add another type level annotation with another associative list. Okay, now let's look what we have achieved. Uh, on the top is uh, the raw query as a string. And on the bottom is uh, the actual code in our current version of the DSL. Here uh, you can see the selectors. And if you look hard <coughs> enough, uh, you, you will see that there are uh, the same arrow-like symbols as in Cypher, but in our Haskell. And everything is checked. And for example, you, you can't join a node with another node without a relation in between, which would be an error in Cypher syntax. OK. and. Uh, for example, uh, if we imagine <coughs> this is how it could like, uh, look like uh, if we add annotations for the return values, but we are still not there. There is still a problem. Uh, in fact, there are many problems. And uh, now we are getting to the most fun and interesting part. Because uh, we've talked about uh, external stuff. We've talked about referring to types 
uh, in uh, our Haskell definition of our domain. We've talked about parameters and returns, but uh, we did not uh, talk about the syntax and semantics of the Cypher language itself. And I uh, remind you, we are making a DSL. So uh, here, for example, uh, is the same string, but compiler does not check that this, I that this actually is the same. So uh, <coughs> it complete is completely uh, up to us. Uh, the same goes for return values. So the string I write in uh, the body of my query and the one in annotation must be the same and it is not checked. Okay, but uh, perhaps the most uh, hard part is uh, that m my language, my <coughs> language cipher, it has variables. And uh, so here I am defining a variable called user and later I'm using this variable. And no one checks that I am using the variables that are previously defined. And if I make a typo or use one wrong name for my variable, I will get a runtime error from the database. And I would not like to do that. I want GHC to check uh, that my query is correct. And uh, what it means uh, is that we will use the GHC, which is a compiler for Haskell language, to check, to type check another language. And moreover, it not a lambda calculus-like language, which you see in every tutorial on this stuff, but a completely alien language to Haskell a query language for a database. So uh, how can we approach this problem? I propose a solution like this. Uh, we add, of course, more type tags. Uh, so I will make a type for <coughs> a statements. So one row, one line in my query. And I will annotate uh, the statement with three type level tags. First of all, I will annotate what variables in the whole query this statement uses. In other words, these are the three variables of my query. Okay. Also, I will annotate what labels, uh, what variables my uh, query defines. So it's new variables, and uh, just uh, <coughs> uh, I will need to define what uh, fields the whole query will return. Um, now, for example, I may have these combinators. Uh, match takes uh, some selector, which uh, knows its variables, and generates a query that uses some free variables, defines some new ones, and does not return anything. And return, for example, it uh, uses a free variable of unknown name, unknown type. It does not define any new variables, and it returns the same thing. OK? And uh <coughs> Uh, the case of returning multiple variables is, of course, possible to do, but uh, the syntax would be a bit more awkward uh, because uh, we would need to use heterogeneous lists in Haskell, and uh, well, they always look a bit more ugly than the nice syntax for lists. Okay, uh, but the problem is that uh, I still want to write my queries like this in do notation, uh, in sort of uh, free monads that I'm using. Uh, which is uh, actually just a writer monad in disguise, uh, but still. Um, but uh, you all know what this uh, code means. It means application of sequential operator from the prelude. Yes, but this operator from the prelude is defined for any monad, and it does not know anything about our fancy types on uh, the statements. So. Uh, if you would try to compile this code, it will not compile because the types will not match. So a JSON statement will have different type tags. And what we need is some kind of uh, operator that is aware of uh, the types we have. So something like this, the operator that will take two queries, uh, each with its own variables, and produce a combined query uh, with uh, some uh, logic on the variables. Okay, but uh, can we still use do notation for that? Yes, uh, and uh, there is a, the least known extension from my talk today, I think. It's called rebindable syntax. Has anyone heard about it? 
uh, yeah, you do not count. Uh, <coughs> and what uh, this extension lets us to do? If you enable rebindable syntax, uh, the DHC will uh, use uh, your own operators for desugaring do notation. So it will see the do notation. It will rewrite it to use the sequential operator, but it will not use the one from prelude, but the one uh, you have defined. And uh, with this, you are able to redefine practically uh, any part of Haskell syntax, uh, syntax that you want. Now, the one thing left to do is to fill the question marks. OK, uh, let's look at them. What do we have here? Uh, we have uh, two, two statements. Uh, does it work? OK, sorry. Uh, we have two statements. Uh, first one has some free variables and defines some uh, new variables. The second one also has its free variables and defines a new one uh, again. So which, uh, what uh, defined variables will the combined query have? It's uh, a simple question. Uh, it is a simple union of two sets of labels, uh, variables. Uh, and uh, what free variables will it have? Uh, probably it is the union of the free variables of the two queries. But uh, it may be the case that the second query uh, ha uses some variables that the first one defines. So the actually, it's free variables. There will be uh, free variables com combined minus the ones defined by the first query. OK? And uh, the last tricky part, uh, the first question marks uh, in the context, uh, mean uh, that uh, the variables uh, that the second query use, uses must be compatible uh, with the variables that the first one defines. So for example, if the first query, a uh, first statement, defines a variable called user, and it has type, for example, I don't know, user, and the second query, it, uh, wants <coughs> it wants a variable called user, but it uses is as a type, I don't know, file. So we should not compile this code, because clearly these two statements are incompatible. And uh, this can be done in Haskell uh, with type families, of course. And this is not just some uh, pseudo code. I actually wrote these type families. Uh, before uh, making this presentation. So it is possible. The code compiles. And uh, now uh, I can have this code. For example, this statement uh, it's, uh, does not use any free variables. It defines something called file, something called user. And the second statement, uh, it uses a free variable called file and does not define any new free variables. I uh, combine them in do notation. And notice there is no annotation, and GHC is able to uh, infer the type. I copied it from, from GHCI. It correctly understands that this uh, query uh, does not have any free variables, so it's a closed query. It uh, defines some free variables, uh, some variables, and it returns a list of uh, one field, user of type user. So uh, we have achieved uh, in theory and in practice, because this code compiles, uh, we have achieved uh, a way to make GHC type check an alien language, which is not like lambda calculus at all. And it has variables with bindings and types. So uh, this is the end of my talk. Uh, here are some uh, useful uh, blog posts that uh, I have read. And without them, I will n would not make it. Uh, I would like to highlight uh, the first link is to our library. Uh, it's called Casbolt Extras. Uh, it's on Hackage and it's uh, usable and it's used in production by us. Uh, the second one, a wonderful book, Thinking with Types by Sandy Maguire, uh, which uh, describes everything that I have talked about and more. And uh, if you allow me, uh, the <coughs> penultimate link to Squeal uh, presentation is uh, Squeal is an uh, experimental SQL library for Haskell. And it is the one that gave me inspiration to try and go this way. Because I remind you, I am not from academia. I am an industrial guy. 
and I got inspired by a talk by another industrial guy. And today, I hope that the only takeaway from my talk is that you get inspired by me. So thank you, and now uh, I can uh, have questions.